Folks, Mr. Lim here again, and this is going to be the last one for polymers um, on nylon and on and polyethylene terephthalate. Uh, Mr. Lim, learn how to talk. All right, so we're going to be learning about those two and their properties and uses. All right. So nylon, what do we know about nylon? It's also known as nylon 66. It's made from hexendioic acid and 16 hexendiamine. Okay, so why is it that we don't need to give numbers on this? hexandioic acid, All right? Remember, it's a dioic acid. They have to be on their ends. And the uh, amines can be anywhere. That's why we have to have the 1,6 to let you know where they are. Okay, so if you can imagine what they are, they're uh, two chains with a double carboxylic acid and another chain of equal length, and that's going to be important, of equal length with amine groups on the end. Okay. Nice and easy. All right, the reaction conditions is created from liquid reactant, so the pressure is irrelevant. Changing from changing the reaction conditions can change the length of the polymer, so therefore they have different um, uh, conditions. Okay, so what do we mean is that remember the polymer is made up of many monomers, and so how many monomers um, depends on the reaction conditions, and the temperature is around about 500 to 540K. Okay, so nylon. Let's draw a diagram of nylon 66. Okay, so uh, you have the dicarboxylic acid. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Dicarboxylic acid. Okay, and the diamine. You should recognize that when the amine comes along, this OH is removed to form uh, water. Right, and your one of the hydrogens on the amines stays there, okay, and then the rest of the carbon chain and another amine, okay, right. So for every um, bonded bond that's formed, um, you're going to have a water molecule form, okay, and then that's what it's going to look like. It's going to have an amide link in the middle, all right. And uh, it's just going to be repeating units of that. So fairly straightforward. Um, obviously, don't forget all of the hydrogens. Whee! And remember, there's no hydrogen here because there's not enough things. All right, not enough bonds for that. So then we could draw another one here if we wanted to. Carbons, mm. carbons, 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 carbons. And one more. Ah, uh, run out of space. Okay, you get the idea. Okay. The regular intervals of straight sections allow the chains of two hydrogen bond to each other and create lots of hydrogen bonds between amide groups. Okay, so this is the important part. Okay, so this is something that's going to really be important when you get asked about why nylon is so strong. So what happens is that here is an amide group. Okay. And so when you have another amide group on the next chain or the next polymer, right, That, well, one of the, the hydrogen from one of the chains is going to hydrogen bond to the oxygen of another chain. So that's going to form a hydrogen bond between the two long chains. Okay. And because they're all of similar length, wouldn't it be real? Oh, oh, I don't want green. Wouldn't it be really useful if you could make multiple, um, Think about Bob's hydrogen bonds. Okay, so another hydrogen bond will form here, and so effectively you've got two really long chains and hydrogen bonds at regular intervals between them. Okay, and you can also have regular hydrogen bonds between other chains that are nearby as well. Okay, and so those hydrogen bonds are at regular intervals all the way down that and that holds these things very strongly okay so that's one of the main properties of nylon 66 is that the hydrogen bonding across the amide groups allows it to have very strong bonds between the polymers all right um yeah chains interlocking we did that all right so um properties they have high tensile strength they can absorb water they have tough res and resistant to abrasion um, 
one thing I'm going to focus on is this ability to absorb water. How does it absorb water? Effectively, all of those amide groups, okay, have the ability to form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. And generally, if you create those hydrogen bonds, they might stay there. And so these water molecules stay attached to those polymers and they don't go away, which means they've been absorbed. All right. Um, what are they used for? Ropes, clothing, stockings, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Okay. PET, polyethylene terephthalate. Okay, this is one of the main plastics that they use in uh, daily life. Made from 1,4-benzendioic acid and 1,2-ethandiol. Okay, 1,4-benzendioic acid. Here's a benzene ring. Here's a carbon, which is connected to uh, a carboxylic as a carboxylic acid group. Okay, so it's 1,4-benzendioic. Okay, so it's the benzene ring, and it's on 1 and 4 are the two carboxylic acids because they can be like, you know, there if they wanted to, but one and four means that they're on opposite ends of the benzene ring, which means that there's a benzene ring in the chain. And one, two, ethandiol, okay? Ooh, I can do a diol, okay? One, two, three, four, with two OH groups on there, okay? So um, that means that it makes a polyester, so what you actually get let me see if we look. Oh, reaction conditions. They need a catalyst of antimony 3 oxide, but it's done in acidic conditions. Uh, done at uh, that temperature and low pressures. Okay, I think I'm going to draw in this uh, diagram in the next one, so let's have a look. Okay, diagram PET. So what that's going to happen is that here's your benzene ring. It's going to be connected via a carbon and an ester group, effectively to the di, uh, diol, the double alcohol, and then there's going to be another benzene ring here. Yeah, Mr. Lim, learn how to draw hexagons. And so that continues on. A little short carbon chain, oops, that's an O, a little short carbon chain followed by a benzene ring. Okay. So the idea about the is that the high amount of stable benzene allows for high stability and strong dispersion forces. Because what happens is that this benzene ring is quite a stable compound, and so it won't react. But also, it's quite a large compound, and so instead of it just being a straight chain, it's a benzene ring, and that benzene ring can form lots of dispersion forces between the thing. So lots of dispersion forces between uh, polymers of, or polymer strands of the PET, okay, because of the high molecular mass of the benzene. Um, properties, high melting boiling point doesn't discolor in light. Why doesn't it discolor in light? Because it's quite stable, because it's got the benzene ring. Uh, depending on how they made different properties, good thermal insulation, high strength to weight ratio, blah, blah, blah. And this is what it's used for. Okay, so the main concepts to remember here are that the nylon produces hydrogen bonding between the amide groups of the polymers. So different polymers form hydrogen bonds with each other. And the main idea with the PET is that the benzene ring is large and stable. And so therefore they'll have lots of, well, number one, it will have stability, which means it won't react with other stuff, but also that there's a high amount of dispersion forces, um, which means that it will have um, quite strong bonding between the polymer strands. Okay, those are the two main ideas. Uh, make sure you have you remember those. That's it.